Welcome back, owners of fine luxury plastic toy soldiers. I am known as Travarian, and today we're going to talk about why recasting might be a bit of a problem for this painting hobby. The reproduction of expensive things as cheap, widely affordable mock-ups has always been a thing. Even in fine art, reproductions are a profitable thing and of course there is a booming business of reproducing brand items and selling them for prices that couldn't even get you a McDonald's menu. Boy, I love me some shopping for Adidas and Girjo Armvni while I dip my Boreos into some Johnny Walker black labial. Don't you agree, Toby One? Now, of course, the most obvious factor on why these reproductions are cheaper is usually a drop in quality. With miniatures, that's not always the case, but like all of these things, it is an example of someone making money off of someone else's work, time, effort and money. Recasting has been a bane of the miniature industry from the start, and multiple times per year the topic comes up in the public eye of the miniature and wargaming hobby sections of the internet. A huge argument ensues and a lot of people are trying to justify the act of recasting by saying it's all Games Workshop's fault. But even with an active recasting scene, they are not the ones who will likely go out of business. Small scale producers have to go to great lengths to protect their intellectual property because frankly it makes their life a bit more miserable than it would have to be as artists. There is at least a way to get illegal sellers off of eBay, but they are not limited to platforms like these, and the constant time we have to spend on this is simply said not spent for creating awesome pieces of plastic that you enjoy. Recasting is the process of taking an existing product, a gaming miniature, a figure or a bust, usually bought from the original producer and seller of the piece, without having to invest any money into the creation of it, making usually cheap copies and selling them to the market for a fraction of the original price. Recasting is done in areas of the world that have a history and the mentality of recreating items by popular brands as cheap copies and that are also impossible to be penetrated by legal actions. China being the obvious culprit here and from what I've personally experienced over the years also Russia has a high number of resident recasters. These countries typically offer cheap labor and raw materials and material safety regulations are practically non-existent. Regular producers of miniatures have a lot of investments on the way to a finished product. They have to put in the time to design the piece, sometimes they hire concept artists, a lot of effort and time goes into sculpting the actual piece, or if they have to hire a freelance sculptor, there is another upfront money investment before the piece even goes into production. If it's designed digitally, they have to print it on a decent 3D printer or pay a company for that service. When the original is done, copies have to be made if you're doing it yourself, you need the equipment and the know-how to do this without quality loss. You have to buy the raw materials and put in the time and that is time that is usually not spent creating or you have to pay someone to create these casts for you. Packaging materials so the copies arrive in one piece at the customer might look cheap but are also to be taken into consideration. All this is usually happening in countries that have high living costs and high wages, high material and shipping costs and thank god have safety regulations that limit the usage of cheap but hazardous materials. Also these producers like to keep certain quality standards, for example safe shipping and packaging, high quality mold making and high quality casting processes to for example minimize things like bubbles in the resin copy which ultimately also limits the amount of pieces castable in a certain amount of time. A lot of companies are also adding prints of the box art, artworks, stickers and other goodies. And uh, while not really necessary, recasters usually offer none of that. They're taking an existing figure, their investment being the retail price, 
as opposite to all of the above mentioned processes and investments the original producer had to go through. They make illegal copies of them, a process that costs them next to nothing because of the cheap material prices and most of the time they don't even care if it breaks in transit. It's just cheaper to send another copy anyway. They are not competing to produce something cheaper than someone else, they simply skip the producing part and reproduce something that someone else has invested a lot of time and effort into. They are parasites that benefit off of the creativity, labor and investment of others. And they are leeching away the well-deserved profits that cover the producer's overhead, production costs, their rent and their possibilities to support their families with earnest, genuine work. Let's look at a few reasons people advocating for recasting give when it comes to justify why they don't think it's a big deal. My miniatures are too expensive and companies are ripping me off. People are confusing multi-million dollar companies with single person entrepreneurs that started out loving to create sculptures that happened to bring joy to people and that managed to make a living out of their love towards creating. These individuals don't have a great turnover to begin with because there's way less people that paint miniatures for the joy of painting than there is people playing tabletop games and actually needing a ton of miniatures to build a playable army. And there's a lot of competition out there which blesses us with multiple gorgeous new releases each month. Let me remind you about all the upfront investments we are talking about here and because of that margins on pieces are not high, trust me. These people need to calculate prices too and don't make a killer fortune, they are just passionate about this and would have probably stopped and gotten a 9 to 5 job if that wasn't the case. Yes the miniature hobby is expensive, Games Workshop and Forge World stuff is expensive and personally I also don't understand some of their price policies. But they also have to calculate for being able to pay overhead production and yes they are giving employment to a lot of people, let's not forget this. This video is not here to defend Games Workshop but in the end they have to make ends meet too and please their shareholders and if you want to hate on anyone or anything in this scenario, in my opinion you have to hate on capitalism. If you feel like the prices are too high, don't buy them, it's simple. Yet we are buying these miniatures anyway like idiots, but that's a different story. And again, we need to distinguish large companies that are established over decades from independent small companies or single person businesses when it comes to how they are impacted by the theft of their intellectual property and recasters. I wouldn't have bought the miniature anyway. That is a justification that you make up to calm that nagging feeling of guilt. It's a false premise. Of course you wanted the miniature. If you didn't want it, you would not have bought it. And that is because most of these sculptures are awesome, I get it. And by the best miniature artists in the business too. How can you not want it? But now it's going to sit in your dark closet next to the other 300 pieces you didn't want and you will never paint anyway. If we are taking the example of people that buy recast Games Workshop products, I think it becomes even more evident. It's not like they were not going to buy anything until something cheap popped up on their screen and then they decided to buy it for the reason it was cheap. Usually there is already intent to buy it cheaper, maybe because it's needed for an army and then the choice is consciously made to buy from a recaster. As long as you pay people that steal other people's work to make cheap copies of it even though you wouldn't have bought it from the original producer anyway, you are part of the problem. If you keep giving money to these people, they will keep doing it. And you keep them present, you keep their websites online for uninformed people to find them and finance them further and you take away money from the original creator. I genuinely believe that there's people out there that don't know that the pages they are shopping at are run by recasters, maybe a significant others trying to find a present for their loved ones or people are branching out from wargaming into bust painting and they just don't know the scene too well. But if you are aware of the problem and spend money on these sites, then you are consciously supporting a criminal activity. If you can't produce something competitively, you will rightfully go out of business.
recasting and producing cheaper are not the same thing. I can't stress it enough. We are not talking about competition in the form of other designers that were lucky enough to live in a country where all these costs are neglectable or that found a better, cheaper way to produce originals or came up with a better marketing strategy. No, we're talking about people that took someone else's original work and are profiting off of it. They have no investments that are associated with developing and the creation of the pieces. All they do is produce cheap knockoff copies. The reason they can make them at only a tiny fraction of the cost is because instead of investing time and money into designing that item, they stole the design. One comparison that is often made is just like Gucci not losing a sale off of a fake handbag is miniature producers not losing a sale off of buying a recast. Not only is that wrong, but buying the recast is also comparable to buying a genuine Gucci bag that you know was stolen. Because let's face it, there is a bunch of recasters out there that know how to create reproductions with minimal quality loss. You are buying something that is as good as the original for a small chunk of the original price, fully aware that the creators will not be compensated for the work. And this has nothing to do with a free market. The pieces are out of print. Sure, one might say, but I want these models that are out of print and no one loses a sale when I buy something that is not for sale anywhere else anymore. Yes, but A, they might still come back by the people that are holding the rights and licenses. Just look at what happened to Confrontation recently. And B, someone is still making money off of something that they legally don't own. People like Latour, who was a bit of a catalyst for the recent research of the discussion, will simply stop producing for the miniatures market. Why he still does it is a miracle to me anyway, because he is one of the most accomplished sculptors in both traditional and 3D sculpting. And he doesn't need to produce for the miniature market. He could just turn to designing toys or work for other companies that require digital sculpts. Others might simply stop producing new pieces altogether and just go back to a 9 to 5 cubicle job. The miniature painting hobby isn't just Games Workshop. It is a multitude of people passionate about creating the miniatures they would like to paint for people that are in love with miniatures the same way they are. But if everything gets stolen and reproduced, there comes a time when it is simply not worth it anymore because you cannot buy food or pay the rent with passion. And that is when these gorgeous miniatures will disappear and all that is left to paint will be Games Workshop again. However you want to justify it in front of your own consciousness, recasting is still stealing, as far as both legal and moral considerations go. There is no discussing this. And consciously buying from recasters makes you an accomplice in this crime, because you are knowingly supporting thieves. Yes, playing tabletop games is expensive. Yes, buying sophisticated, large-scale miniatures that you would like to paint is expensive, but you still have to check and see if your want is in line with your need and whether or not you have enough disposable income to satisfy your wants. No one forces you to buy these things. Not a single argument justifies buying from recasters. If you think something is too expensive, voting with your wallet by not buying it is still the better option than to think of yourself as Robin Hood when you intend to harm big companies by buying from individuals that harm the hobby itself. If you want to be able to continue to paint awesome, innovative pieces, support the people that design, sculpt and produce them because if you don't, there will be no more originals to be pirated.